Hello, welcome to Saturday morning. Code with Coach. We are here with our co-hosts. Say hi, Blue Whale. Say hi, V. Here's the Code Coach. Here's... <laughs> good morning, good morning. All right, we got the... the the bus going we are set and live here all right i'm gonna stop the bus so welcome to the live stream we're gonna do some coding this morning we got some cool themes we're gonna introduce a lot of fun topics but uh last week's challenge is still open for next week as well we had two coders uh, as you see the code coach there um, i'm gonna show you a little bit behind the scenes it's actually a, a scratch project that's in the studio that we use well i asked others if they wanted to create a green screen project. And here's one from SP20 Fox. Now let me play it and see how it goes. Let's watch this. Whoa. All right, this is who created it. It plays a uh, tick. It looks like plays it. Sorry, I'm going to have to mute my other TV. So I just realized I started hearing things. All right. So the catch here is notice how like the frog is hidden. So here's the other one from Whitney, I believe. Let me double check. Hold on. Let me. Uh, yes, Whitney. It's called Frog. I go full screen. Wasn't intending to show you the secrets. And it said in the instructions. Oh, they even put their name in there. Nice. All right, and then there's the frog. So you don't see anything but the frog and the fly. I hit the space, and it jumps and eats the fly over and over. Nice, nice. So I'm going to ask V and Blue Whale, so why are the frog and the fly almost invisible? Any ideas? What do you Probably think? Probably because of your... Mm, what do you maybe think? Maybe a green screen? Because since it's green, it, it would actually be green, but... You can't see it because your green screen is probably reacting with it. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So if you look at the projects, if it has any green in it, that's what's getting blanked out. So you'll notice when I did the code bus, it's, I made sure it wasn't green and I had it moving around. So just keep that in mind. So you'll see both of these projects are in today's studio. I just thought it was kind of cool uh, to see that. So thanks for joining and uh, – uh, kind of playing with that so again the challenge is still open so next week if you want to be in the live stream this is recorded your project will be in there uh, let me go and introduce everyone so what's new this week so we're doing two themes today we're crunching a lot in a short time uh, we're celebrating black history month and as well as uh, there's a famous uh, african-american woman black uh, scientist at NASA that contributed to the landing on the moon. And then we had the famous NASA Perseverance rover land this week. So uh, I kind of try to combine both important themes into kind of one project for today. So you'll see we have something coming up there. So that's what we're gonna be working on. I'm gonna jump right into it so I don't spend too much time talking about it. Uh, for those of you that are joining on Scratch, uh, if you look in the comments section, uh, information on the YouTube video, or if your parents had subscribed um, and asked for an RSVP to this event, you get a link to this project. So in this project is where we see comments and how you can kind of interact. So we've got Jax Vader there with us. Uh, with, uh, 144, yes, I did mean 144. I probably said something else. Hey, it's starting. We got Indie Pig on as well. So welcome. Uh, this is the project where we'll look uh, and kind of watch for your comments as well. And we're using scratch.mit.edu. If you're new to the live stream or you're watching a recording, you're like, what website are they on? So all of the links that I use in this presentation are in the description of the YouTube video down below. So you can always find those. You're like, where did he go for those links? So they're all available to you when you watch the recording or even in the live stream. So I wanted you to know where to find those. Uh, I always like to go over and take a look at this as well. Uh, the Scratch website. 
let me go and look over here. All right, so we're down at the bottom. So the community guidelines, I think, are really important to, to be aware of, right? Uh, the environment is be respectful, constructive. We share projects. In fact, that's what uh, the one project was, was a remix. We're going to be doing that today. Don't share ever, actually not just on Scratch or any website. Don't ever share your very private information that identifies you specifically and where you're at. Uh, that's just a great rule online. No matter what accounts you have, be honest. And we're trying to keep everything friendly. So I like to have uh, a reminder. Um, so this is where we're watching the comments on this section. Thanks for joining. So for Black History Month, one of the uh, sites I highlighted was that uh, code.org has a great reference. And I'm not going to watch this video here. It's about a two-minute video, Changing the Face of Computer Science. Again, it's very inspirational. Uh, I think it's part of the celebration uh, it's a great video to watch. I recommend it. And I wanted to scroll down because they hi highlighted black pioneers in our computer science history. And there are many here. And you'll notice the one I picked was Katherine Johnson, right? So she had a 35 year career at NASA. And before it was called NASA, it was called NACA. This was back in the 60s for the first uh, lunar landing to land on the Mars. So she was a calculator, part of the team that helped do calculations. So I just found her story inspiring, and she received the uh, Presidential uh, Medal of Honor as well. So this is her biography. She actually passed away last year, um, sadly, uh, but uh, I'd like to encourage everyone to read a lot about her contributions and stories and how she um, really made an influence impact uh, in, in science. Okay, let's see. Um, do you, are you guys seeing a double screen? That's interesting. I'm, I'm seeing kind of a double screen. Oh, there we go. I think that's what I was doing wrong. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it larger. I just realized people were seeing a double. There we go. There we go. That fixes it a little bit. Uh, and then there's some more details about her as a NASA trailblazer. So I just want people to be aware. Uh, again, uh, she was, uh, I guess, a pillar for uh, racial, racial equality in our country, uh, important part of our history. So definitely celebrating her contributions is so important for people to be aware of. Okay, let's see. Um, so here's, oh, and I, so, so in Scratch, which we use, there is a Scratch Black History Month uh, uh, studio where if you have a project and you're celebrating uh, Black History Month, Black Lives Matter, uh, whatever project you create, uh, you can share in this studio. So I wanted people to realize that Scratch is uh, spending a lot of uh, time allowing people to express um, their projects and share those projects. So I think it's really important to see that they're doing that. Um, let me see something. Sorry. I can't tell if my whole, is my whole screen, are you guys seeing everything? Sorry, I just realized some of my window was cut off. Apologize. There we go. I think this is fitting better now. Um, so the Mars Perseverance. So I don't know if some of you saw this. The website is there. I'm going to share this one-minute video. Uh, it's a synopsis of their landing success. So let's just watch this. Check this out. We are starting the straighten up and fly right maneuver in preparation for parachute deploy. The navigation has confirmed that the parachute has deployed and we are seeing significant deceleration. All right, so I'm just pausing it here. You see that dropped off of the, uh, the chassis there, the main part? That's called the sky crane. And I just wanted to pause it there because that is one of the images that I have embedded in our starter project today. There's a Giphy image that NASA put in. So you'll see as we code, and I talk about the sky crane, that's what that is. That's the sky crane. Sky crane maneuver has started. About 20 meters off the surface. We're getting signals from the MRL. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance. Yes, please. On the surface of Mars. Ready to begin seeking the band of half-life. It was like... Whoosh. Everybody watching that was so relieved and happy. It looks like we're getting the first image. This is the most amazing thing. 
This is what NASA does. This is what we can do as a country. I hope you found that inspiring. You can tell I definitely did. So these are the images. I just want to do again, the, the links are there. If you want to pull down more, I used NASA has a Giphy site and there's the sky crane. We have some of that and we have the Rover on Mars as well. So I just wanted to give you a preview of where I receive those images and where you can download and also use some of those. So let's get scratching. I know you guys have been, uh, uh, very patient here. <laughs> uh, let me see. So here is the studio itself. I'll reload it. So this is the comments project that we're using to watch uh, comments from people. So let me close that. Let me. I want to make sure I have that at the beginning. I'm going to hide all of these. Bear with me. I just want to be able to see all of your... Oh, I guess I don't have that one open. Let me just watch. I want to make sure we can see your your comments coming in. Awesome. Very intense. Yeah, that video was dramatic. I was watching it for a long time live. I hope some of you um, think how you know that. Yeah, we're kind of coding a Mars rover game. Hey, we got Gimo EW. Uh oh, Asher Frog. Hey, I got my nephew on. Sweet. <laughs> Thanks for joining. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm glad you're able to join. Yeah, we are coding. So you can make a game. Um, but this is the comments I'm watching. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the studio and click on this project. So I'll show you. So I'm logged in as a student, WA20 bat, because I want you to see what a student would see. And I also don't want to change this starter program. So if you click on it and you're kind of new to scratch, one of the biggest things about sharing is SP20 Fox did that with that other program. She remixed, which is kind of taking a copy and then changed elements of someone else's program. So you can build on others work. And that's what I did here. I created this code launcher. So Blue Whale and V, if you want to get started on this as well, that would be awesome. Um, and if you- I was already working on it. Yeah, all right, yay. Yeah, so Blue Whale's like, I know about these uh, uh, projects. So if you hit play, I started a little bit of code, right? I have in there, let's celebrate Black History Month. Uh, let's honor Katherine Johnson. I put a little information so you see how I had some dialogue in there. NASA mathematician in the 60s. And so this is where I stopped. What do you think she would say, right, about the Perseverance rover? Because she worked on calculations in the era of early computing where they had to do math by hand for the astronauts to make sure they made it back to Earth and made it to the moon. And here we are landing a rover in the most dramatic way possible. Um, what do you think she would think? So this project, uh, I'm going, since I'm logged in as a student, I recommend you click this green button, do a remix. And these are the credits, right, of where I, I have the images are here. So as a remix, uh, we're going to start in here, and I'm going to show you kind of where things are at. I need to move, sorry, I need to, I'm going to move these guys over a little bit. There we go. Sorry. I need to move the window a little bit because I'm blocking my own little thing here. All right. I think I'm back. Okay. Down here, I'm going to click on the equals. So you'll see the code I have. I have multiple uh, sprites, uh, the two characters that are talking. You can see the code. I have an earth sprite. And then V, I'm going to ask you a question. So you'll notice there are these. There's source one. If I click on it, you'll notice it's not there, right? So since I'm talking about animation, how would you animate this source one? What would you start with first? Help me out. First, I would show it so that people can see it. Got it. So I'll do that. I click show and boom, there's the first image. Okay. So, so that's, that was my secret. I had clicked hide when I saved this project so you, people wouldn't see it, but I left the blocks there. So there's the show. Should we look at the costumes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so click on costumes. Now this is where a GIF comes in. So a GIF, do you want to describe what it is, V? Do you know GIFs? Have you worked with GIFs before? It's kind of like an image. It's like a video actually, but it like loops forever. Got it. Exactly right. So the GIF makes it possible. In Scratch, we don't really have 
movies built in, but a GIF, if you look at this, there's the first image, second image, third image, and it moves just a little bit each time. So let's scroll down. Let's see how many images there are. So I'm going to scroll all the way down. And the reason that's important is I was going to say, let's code so we do one full pass of all the images. So there are 93 different images. So let's think about that as we code. So what would you recommend I start first? I'd like to play and kind of do it as a pass. So one pass of 93 images. So what do you suggest? And those of you at home can start coding as well. Don't wait for us. Please explore. Repeat 93 times. Okay, oh. let's go repeat 93. All right, so I'm going to repeat something in the control blocks. What am I repeating? Oh, I'm changing the costume. Next costume. Looks, next costume. Okay, now how about slowing it down or do you want to see it running full speed? Um, I think you should slow it down like by 0.1 seconds. Okay, let's try it. I like animation. So it's control. So he's saying uh, wait 0.1. So instead of waiting a full second, we're doing a wait 0.1. Let me see something real quick. Hold on, bear with me. Um, I want to see... I'm trying to see, sorry, I'm trying to see the live stream. Yep. Yeah, okay. I, I just couldn't tell. I have a TV screen where I'm trying to monitor to see if it's visible. Okay. The blocks are pretty visible. Nice. Nice. Okay. Now what next? Can I test it? What if I click it? All right. Ooh, check this out. Wow. Here it comes. Whoa. That one I like. So that's the sky crane cruising by, and it's playing all 93 images. Oh, oh, and it went all the way back to the top, to the very first image. Awesome. What did you think? It looks really cool. It looks cool. All right. So what's what do we want to change in our backgrounds then, right? We've got our astronauts. We've got Earth. Well, guess what? Um Let's check out the stage. There's the other surprise. If you click on stage, Blue Whale, did you find this yet? The secret content in the stage. So if you click on stage and go to backdrops, you're going to find another surprise. Oh, I'm trying to click. There we go. It just took a while to load. So I had picked the first backdrop as stars, but look at what we've got. The Mars surface, also in a GIF. So let's just check out how many images there are. Now this one, when I imported it, it looks a little odd, but I just want to show you. Whoa, 114 separate little images. So what do you think, V? Let's do the same for this. Play yeah. it through. Play it through. So let's see. Yeah. What, do we, what do we have to do to fix that? Uh, let's see. In the stage, what do you suggest? Because we're starting, we're starting with the stars, right? So in the beginning, it starts with the stars. And then um, how do you want to activate playing the, the lunar piece? Do you want it to just have a delay? What do you, what do you want to do here? What do you think? I think you should wait for their dialogues to be through and then um, only start switching to the Mars. Got it. So how can we coordinate that in code? So if we go, this is the last person that speaks, right? And so instead of adding up all the seconds, because suppose we added more dialogue, what do you think about using messaging? Yeah, you could use a message that um, after, as soon as they're done, they can broadcast message one. Okay, so that's an event. There is broadcast. Now, do you want to name it? something i like naming it so because people then if you add more messages you'd be like i don't remember what message one means so what would well, you name it like name it s switch backdrop i guess oh let's say uh mars yeah mars would be fine too switch to mars this is just the message name so that way it means something to us in the code so this is this is the computer being told to wait. This character speaks. Now, you'll notice we're putting this on the character that spoke last. So if you added more to this story, then it would do it here. And what's nice about using a broadcast, 
How is that better, do you think, than just counting up all the seconds and telling everybody else to wait? Why does broadcast work better? What do you think? Because, um, like, it uses less blocks. And um, also, if you wanted to add more things to, like, their dialogue, or if you wanted to add more things to the Mars um, rover or Mars backdrop, you could add those, and you wouldn't have to recount the seconds in everything. Perfect. Yeah, and, and that's important, right? Because right here, suppose I've decided, oh, you know what? What do I think? Um, I, and I decided she would say go NASA. If I added that dialogue, it, I don't have to keep changing the number of seconds because this message is always going to go out. It says switch. Okay, so she, she would say go NASA. That's what I've added to the dialogue. Then it broadcasts switch to Mars. So now we've got to go back to the stage code. So you'll notice we're adding code to the stage. Here's that event. So when I receive that message, and you'll notice you can have a whole list of different messages. Uh, what do we do? Start start our, what do you think? Start our uh, animation? Yeah. Do you remember how many did I say there, there were? 113. <laughs> uh, 113, right? Okay, so I'm just going to say, because um, it starts with stars when the green flag is clicked. It goes to the next backdrop. And 113. So we probably have to do one less, right? 112. Next backdrop. Whoops. Let me do it this way. And then a point one delay. Oh, yeah. And the delay. Thanks for the reminder. Now, let's, let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to click this code. Just this part. Let's see what this Mars background Ooh, there's the animation of the Mars background. Now you'll notice, I've noticed when I was playing it, I'll go full screen so people could see. We only made it go through one pass. And really what it is, this is a NASA modeling of a view after the landers landed. So that little dot is, is the very beginning. So if I click the very beginning again, um, we still have our crane showing up, but that's all right. So our characters are going to talk back and forth. Um, about honoring uh, Mrs. Johnson. And what do you think she would say? She would say, go NASA, and then our code hit for the background and it starts backing up. All right, so there are a couple other things we want to happen, right? So that message, we could use it for a couple other things. When, when they finish talking, should this character hide? What do you think? So let's start making these characters hide when it goes to Mars, right? Because we don't want them all there at Mars. So just remember, if you ever pull out a hide, what do I always say? Pull out a show, right? Because if we're going to hide this character after it says switch to Mars, we need to show it in the beginning because you saw that trick where this crane was, was hidden. So this will now hide her. Let's do that on this other character as well. So in the beginning, she shows and says things, but she needs to hide when that message is received. So when I receive switch to Mars, this character hides. Uh, what about the Earth? We want the Earth to hide as well. In the beginning, it's there. Hopefully everybody's able to follow. We're going to show and hide. So V, are you able to, hopefully I'm not interrupting yours. Are you coding your own or are you coding with this, this one? Yeah, I'm coding with you. Oh, are you? Okay. Uh, so tell me what, give me some more direction. This is, I'm just kind of walking through. I'm, I'm going to show the earth and I'm just adding the code for all the sprites. So when it receives switch to Mars, the earth is going to hide. Now, what, what other, you could add some special effects like while they're talking, right? You could have, or you can have it like change color effect by like 10. Ooh, let's try that. I like that. Let's see what it looks like. So he's talking about going to the looks and in the looks menu, there's something you got to scroll down a little bit. So just always be aware that some of these, when you go to looks, there are a lot of looks commands. This here, this change color effect. And there are options here. You can do fisheye, whirl. You could, you could make the earth turn into a ghost, whirl away. There are a lot of fun effects. 
So you said change color by what? Five? Uh, and put it in a loop a couple times? What do you think? Until, like, they're done talking. Ooh, until they're done talking. So we could kind of make it a forever, right? Yeah, because that you won't even you won't even see it. Yep, and then when it gets the switch to Mars, it just disappears. But it will be forever changing color effect. Let's just test this block of code and see. Ooh, there's the Earth right there. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Should I put a delay, or do you like that speed? I don't know if you can see it. Um, I think you should put in a little delay. A little delay. I, I, I agree with you. I like I like a little. Well, let's let's experiment. What do we try? What do you know, point zero or point two? There's a point two. What I like is the loop is running and it can kind of change the numbers and watch the effect. What number do you like? I'm gonna pick whatever you want. Here's a point three. I think point zero five should be good. Point zero five. Ooh, yeah, it gives it kind of a slow wow. I like the way it really changes all the colors. Awesome. Okay, I like that. So we made that effect. So those of you at home, you can do things. You can change the size of the earth. You can make it pulse. There are a lot of things. Please experiment. Don't just think you have to do what we're doing. This is kind of a start. That's all this is. We're just giving you a start. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to stop the code for right now. And let's fix source one. All right, so what's the trick with source one? So this is the crane. So he when should, yeah, go the, ahead. Like you need the when I receive the message so that it doesn't um, like just disappear when Got it's it. like. So when it receives the switch to Mars, he needs to show and then he's going to do this flyby. Whoa. Okay. All right, so you notice we're, I'm just testing these blocks of code, so all, that's why all the other ones haven't hidden. Now, the other one we have is I haven't shown you this. Let me just hide this one real quick, is this one. Let's do a show of this. So this is a little different of a GIF. Let's check the costumes out. There are 53 different ones. So again, I guess when the green flag is clicked, it's hidden. And then when it receives the switch to Mars, we want it to tell the computer to show it and then do the repeat, right? What did I say? 67? Whoops. 57? I think I said 57. Um, we were doing a weight of what? 0 0.1, 0 0.2? I forgot what you liked. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Got it. Next costume. 0 0.1. Did I do that? All right, let's see. So this will all happen again when they finish talking and this message goes out. So this is why it's important in Scratch projects. Messaging is a pretty cool advanced way of coding is you want to synchronize things to happen. So if you're creating a multi-level game, messaging is the way to go. So uh, think about that. You can use messages to change screens, change levels, make more bosses appear, new characters appear in your story, an animation to launch. So messaging is, I'm glad we're using it here. Let's check out just this code. Let's see what it looks like. The earth is kind of blocking it, but you can kind of see this one I called the hover. So the crane kind of hovers and flies away. The earth is kind of in the way there. Let me, let me hide the earth. All right. So here's the tricky part. We've got two, we have two of these, <laughs> right? So we could, in our story, we could have two, two, two arrivals. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. So how do you want to coordinate this? We really don't want both, right? So do you think we need a different message? Um, what do you think? Use one of them first, because look, I didn't even show you. There's the rover lander, and it also has a lot of costumes. So I just want everybody on the stream and recording to realize all of these are there. And that the rover has a hundred, oh my goodness, 181 images. So that one's also cool. Um, let me hide that. So here's, uh, I got a question for you, Blue Whale. Have you, I don't know, have you seen what we've been working on? I know you've been like digging into your code, which is cool. Let me check out comments really fast. Let's see if we've got some comments. Uh, what do I do? Oh, so you do a remix, Jax Vader, but that was six minutes ago. 
Uh, Mars looks like a desert. Yeah, actually it does. The Mars surface pretty much is like this totally dry desert. So uh, interesting fact, I'm in Idaho. So for the lunar landing, there's a place called Craters of the Moon. There's a, a, a I think it's a national park. Um, Craters of the Moon in Idaho that they trained. NASA astronauts came out here to train because the surface was so similar. Uh, the geology here to the surface of the moon and pretty much looking like Mars. So you can go to places in Utah that look a lot like that. So you're absolutely right. Hey, we got ZD54 here. Yay. Yeah, a lot of backdrops. Uh, what is your, oh, what's my, oh, SP20 Fox. Hey, I hope you were there at the beginning, SP20 Fox. We played your green screen project uh, that you remixed and made for Code Coach. So I hope you saw that. Oh, my favorite color is green. <laughs> Good question. Awesome. All right, so I'll come back to the scratch here in a little bit. Uh, whoops, wrong project. Let me close that one. All right, so we're here. Um, so Blue Whale, I've got a question for you. So we have these different um, cranes and the rover landers and the images for Mars. But if you notice, look at this, there's a white bar like, so when I go to this stage and they're actually on Mars, the, the scratch screen shows this white. Do you have any suggestions? Like, how, what would you do to kind of fix that so it just doesn't have this white bar there? What I did is that I clicked on the whole thing and then I pulled it up. So that makes it a little uneven, but it still works. So describe what you mean by you pulled it up. You went into the backdrop and and manipulated the image yeah so i grabbed it one corner and dragged it down to the other corner so got it down. so you you kind of took this first image and so her solution was kind of dragging it and, and so that kind of zooms in and she's filling up the whole thing now i'm going to do an undo so that would work i like that solution i did that on a project i did thursday night actually uh with one background image but here's the dilemma blue whale Look at how many different images I have. I have, if I play the background GIF, if I actually run it like an animation, I would have to do that for <laughs> a hundred and fourteen, 113 times. So I definitely don't want to do that on this one. So that would, I, I mean, you could. I mean, it would take a lot of time. I'm, I'm looking for something that we can do here. What, what's another idea, do you think? Do you have any ideas? Like, I guess you could try using the um, paint bucket and, like, getting an exact color and, like, putting it in, but it wouldn't, like, match very well. Let's try it. Let's try it. I like that idea. So what I did, I like your idea, so I'll tell you what I did, and then I deleted it. I had a sprite there, uh, and those of you at home... If you have other ideas, I'd love to see it. Some people may want to draw like little Martians standing here. You could put little sprites that look like they're standing there. And they're like, welcome Earthlings. Or they may be, I've seen some funny memes where people are like, go back home Earthlings. So you could use that space there. I just didn't like the white. What I had done is I created black bars because I was thinking about this initial space background I used. And I created black bars, but I just realized what you said. I like your idea a lot better. So let me show people how to do that. So at home, you can do it. Um, so we're not going to manipulate the actual image here. The way I'm going to do it is we're going to create a sprite. So you choose a sprite, and we're going to paint it. And this is where we're going to kind of create a big rectangle. And... I know what you were saying, V, about the color, but here's where there's the eyedropper. So those of you who've never used this, this is a really, I, I had learned this this year. I never had used it enough. And I was like, wait a minute, Scratch has this cool tool. So I'll, I'll kind of say it again. I went over here and I created a paint sprite. I clicked that and it gave me this blank canvas. And the idea is I'm gonna create a sprite that's a big rectangular block that fills here and here at the bottom. But we want the color to match. And I was using black before, which kind of gave it the sky look, but I like uh, V's idea better is to color match it. So let's, and this is where, oh gosh, five minute warning. So um, 
We've got time. We've got time. We've got about 10 minutes. Um, if you go to this little marker, sorry, it's an eyedropper. I don't know some of you, I don't know if you've ever used like where you squeeze it and you can pick up liquids and paints. So it's kind of simulating that I can copy a color. Oh, I can't. Oh, it lets me pick something from here, but not here. Oh, that's tricky. Um, I, let's. Yeah. So what? if you go back to the actual backdrop, yeah. Um, and you do the exact you um, click the square and like um, use the eyedropper on the yeah on the soil. Okay, I'll pick this spot right there. It looks kind of darker. I click on that. Mm -hmm. So and when you get that, um, make squares, and then you can copy those squares and put them on the sprite. Uh, what do you mean, make square? Like on the top, where you just like drag it and make it. Oh, like just draw it here. You mean? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so I, we've picked. So we've picked a color using the eyedropper. I hope people saw this is like a little magnifying glass. So this is how you exactly color match something. So I picked that color. I need to kind of click away. And he's saying, now draw like a little square. So let's say I do that. I go like that. Okay. But that's still on the background. How am I going to get it into my sprite? So if you um, click Control C, it would copy it. Because oh, it's highlighted right now. If you Control C, it'll copy. Um, or you can just do Control X. It'll delete it and copy it. Ooh, let's try control. I'm going to try control C. Now I'm going yeah. to go back to the sprite. Uh, oh, look at this. It, the fill color is there. I didn't yeah. know, I didn't know scratch would do that. Hey, that's a pretty cool tool. I didn't realize that. So I went all the way to the stage and picked my color using the eyedropper whatever I clicked here and I wanted that one. It kind of updated this block, but what I didn't realize is then when I go to the sprite, it leaves the last color. How's that? That's pretty nice. I didn't realize that. So I'm using a block. Let's see. So I'm going to draw a big rectangle and it doesn't matter the size because here we're just going to kind of move it and I'm kind of dragging it and I'm looking over here where I fill in. So I think I picked a darker color is probably better down here, right? Matches down there below the legs. Oops. What do people think? I'm kind of blocking myself there. You need layers now. Yeah. There you go. That's not too bad. And I could and I could put this to the bottom, right? I could always say this is the top layer. Or the bottom layer, right? Yep, you're right. Um, just for simplicity, I'm going to duplicate uh, this block. Oh, it doesn't let me. Let me do select. I've got to do select. I click that block. I say copy, paste. It's made a copy of it. And I'm going to do this. This is just, again, it's not a perfect project. So we can kind of get, kind of going here. There we go. I'm just trying to fill the gaps. All right, that's not too bad. Let's see. Let's see how this plays out. Let's just, I'm going to do a save now. Um, and in the project page, I'm just going to take out the names code launch project. I'm just going to say go. I like the word go, as you can tell. Uh, going full screen. Let's see what we've got so far. Oh, there we go. So the bars are, are there now. So we could hide that sprite in the beginning, right? There's the earth changing colors where you had it. The characters are introducing uh, this is Johnson. She would say go NASA. And there's our, there are two. And there's, there's Mars with the colors. So we've gotten rid of the white bars. I like that. Whoa. Nice. And that animation plays through. Awesome. That's pretty good so far. There's a lot still to do, right? This one has a lot of material to work with. Uh, let me go back to see inside. Um, I wanted to give a chance. Let's see if there's some comments. 
that we see from people and if there are people that are um, also wanting to share. Um, I'm trying to find this studio. Sorry, I want to see if anybody shared their projects yet. I'm looking at the studio. Anybody share something we can play? Oh, not yet. So don't forget to share what you're working on in the studio, Blue Whale, uh, as well. Um, I'll show you how to do that. This is my uh, WA-20 bat one here. I'll do share. I'm clicking share. And I'll try to add to the studio. Oh, this one does. Oh, there's Saturday morning code. So I click share Saturday morning code with coach. Okay. So that, that way all of you can have what we created this morning as reference. So if I go back to the studio and reload, it's there. Um, so Blue Whale, do you want to share what you're doing so far as we continue? I'll, I'll keep coding here for a bit. Uh, let's see if there's any comments. SP20 Fox. Oh, other than green. Uh, I like blue SP20 Fox. Uh, I like pigs. What's your favorite animal from Indie Pig? Hmm, I like my dog a lot right now. Um, but other than that, what's my favorite? I used to like elephants a lot, honestly. Uh, do I do some code. It changes right to Mars and not stars when it's a green flag. Okay, so Jack Spader changed his. That's fine. Yeah, nice. Everybody can do their own. As long as you know how you're controlling it, you have control of the program. So uh, those are the last comments I see. That was about nine minutes ago. So anybody share their project so far? I'd like to, sh to show these. Oh, there's Jack Spader's. Let's check it out. I'm going to play yours. Let's see what he's done so far. I'd like it. And remember, everything's work in progress, so don't, don't worry. Um, I like to give it a star. Now, these you'll notice, because of all the images and the GIFs, they're kind of big scratch projects, so it takes a little while to load. Um, and there we go. I go full screen. Let's check it out. So we'll be back history month. I like the way he's got the stars there already and the, and the uh, crane. Did you add anything more that she says? Oh, woohoo for NASA. Nice. Whoa. I like the way you had the other character say it too. Whoa. Oh, you jumped. Nice. So he showed the first one. Perfect combination. I like that. You notice what he did? I like it, right? He played the first GIF when it was smaller. And look at the, the uh, landscape in the back. Oh, and then he filled the colors in. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, good job. I like the way you... Uh, wrote the code already, so the uh, if you see inside, let's see how he did it. Uh, I'm gonna click the equals. So this one kind of he did a, a, a kind of a big wait for 20 seconds. So that's all right. You don't have to use messaging. He kind of said, you know what? In 20 seconds, I kind of know they're done talking. Uh, and then so this one starts. And let's see this one here. Oh, you didn't use the hover. I thought I saw both. No. I don't know why I thought I saw this one moving, but I don't see any code for it. I thought I saw both of them flying. Am I imagining things? Um, and then you notice we have the lander we haven't even put on yet. Um, and he had the stage bumping. So when he gets, oh, so he has a backdrop switches to stars. Got it. So he used the uh, event for when a backdrop goes to stars. Nice. Yeah, keep it up. You'll notice we didn't even... Um, should we put in the code to take a look at ours, V, to make the uh, the rover? Did you see what that looks like? No, we didn't see the rover. Yeah, let's do that. Let's. Um, I'm going to click the green flag so this kind of hides. Now, how would you fix this part, right? We could make this sprite, the bars that we put in, kind of, because I don't like the way it messed up the stars. We can fix that, right? We could say, hey, when the green flag is switched, uh, we hide, right? So in the beginning, the bars are gone, and we only need the Mars bars when the, the messaging is received, right? So when I receive the switch to Mars, then it will show. So that doesn't mess up the beginning. And let's check out the rover. We'll put this one in. And 
This one's kind of cool. It's really big, so you may have to uh, to kind of shrink it. Let's see. Change its size. You can do that in code with looks. Honestly, what I've done before is to give the effect that it's rolling away from you is as it's moving backwards, you shrink the size a little at a time inside the loop. So some of those, some of you can try that out. Um, I'm going to do, do you remember how many costumes this one has, V? 181. 181. Good memory, good memory. All right, 181. So this is going to repeat. Um, we're going to make it, I'm just going to say hide when the green flag is clicked. When it receives the show to Mars, we need next costume. This is going to be our last. If, you're, if you want us to show, we're going to wrap up the show here. If you have more to share with us, put it in the studio. We'll take a quick look at it. I'd like to see it in the show so we can see different visions of people's ideas. Let's see. This will, and there it is. Oh, it kind of moves backwards. Like you see its wheels moving. Now, again, we're not on the Mars surface, but that's all right. Uh, you did. What do you say? It's moving so slow. Yeah, it is. Let's see. Let if, let, what if I do zero? Wait. Yeah, it is a slow moving. Interesting. I wonder if it's just Scratch having a hard time with uh, it's a big image. And that's a lot of images to go through. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's about, look, that's with no delay. So it's kind of a slow moving, uh, slow moving GIF. But to me, that would be like your wrap up. Like it's landed. You could change the background to look like the surface. They've got some cool pictures of the surface. Um, so anyway, that's what it looks like. As you can tell, I'm just going to do a save now. Any last comments from people? Fox. Oh, no, there's no forgetting. You're still working on stuff. Oh, this was fun. Hey, Shark is here. Nice. Uh, oh, and Fina Finn. Nice. Oh, oh, you want to be a curator. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll add you uh, th before next week. Sorry, Fina Finn. I'll invite you. I thought I invited you. I'm not going to do that now live on the show, but I'll add you too. So anybody else that wants to be a curator that is not a curator in the studio, um, please just uh, let me know the way you know if you're a curator. It just makes it easier for you to add uh, projects to it. Oh, it's, it's asking me to confirm. Oh, there we go. We got sharks in there. Shark has two projects and wit eye. Oh, and another green screen. So is this Space Blasters for my intro for next week? Wit eye, you'll have to put that comment there. Uh, let me play. I'm going to play across this way. Uh, and Jax Vader still working on his. Awesome. We played his already. Let's see what Wit, uh, Wit, Whitney, uh, Whitney, I can't ever say it right. It says, use your mouse to see what happens when the rover touches the alien and the rover will go to your mouse. Ooh. Oh, there's an alien in it. Nice. Check this out. Whoa, the earth has been digitized into a block. I love it. I don't even know it's the earth anymore. I like the effects. Oh, it's cool. I'm glad you kept the intro. Whoa, there it is. Oh, it's going to my mouth. Oh, yeah, let's see. Will it? What's going to my mouth? Um, let me see. Where is the, the alien hasn't appeared yet. Oh, there it is. Back to Earth. You, what should I call you? I'll call you Earthling. Go back to Earth, you Earthling. <laughs> oh, look, and the rover is, ah, so he's got an image. Look, wherever I move the mouse, the rover goes to my mouse. Oh, I like that. Look at that. You could already make a game with that, right? You could say, hey, one of NASA's missions is to find, uh, they're looking for uh, microbial life, signs of life. And maybe there's a spot here you could put a sprite that you've got to get your rover to. And you have obstacles in the way, right? Whether the obstacles are Martians that are saying, go <laughs> alien identified. Oh, I love it. So there's some great code here that, that has conditionals that says, hey, if this sprite, is touching the other sprite, things pop up and it says alien identified. Awesome, awesome. Back to Earth, that's a great one, I love it. Yeah, that's a lot of coding there, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm impressed, that's nice. Yeah, keep up the great work. You can see where you could create a whole game, I like your custom artwork. 
you'll get blind. No, MNCC Shark. Oh, is this? Oh, this is an old one. March 19th. Oh, this is from last week. Yeah, I want to look at what you made today. Let's see. Oh, this is his from today. There you go. Oh, this is Gimos. Oh, Shark. Sorry, I missed this one. There's there's MNCCs. Sorry, Shark. I almost passed over yours. Yeah, sorry. These take a little while to load. I'm going to play through what's here, and then we're going to wrap up the show and say see you next week. So hopefully you can stay. Oh, there's the Earth being like, I think that's mosaiced into tiny earths. I like the way it turns into this cool pattern. What would you think she would say about the Perseverance rover? She would say, GG. <laughs> nice. She would. She'd be like, she seems like the hip kind of woman that would be like, GG. Good game. Oh, nice, nice. I like the way you use the animation. Oh, and you kept the background animation and you put the brown uh, Mars uh uh, bars in there too to keep the colors so yeah i noticed on this last image there are some sky colors so if i were going to improve mine i would then copy this sky color here so it looks more like a mars sky and then this dark part but yeah i like the way it's not white good job nice job shark uh let's see and anybody else share i think we had at least one more blue whale did you put yours in there yet or no I'm still working on it. Yeah, I'll, you you could share it. You could share your work in progress. I love work looking at works in progress. Yeah, I'm never done. Oh, there's Gimos. Yes, let's check this out. So Shark, I'm not gonna I might delete. I don't know if you want to delete this. I'm asking students uh, to only post projects that we're creating here today, or if it's something for the green screen challenge. So that way, because uh, I'm trying to avoid people just putting everything they've ever created in this studio so that way we keep it as part of our our uh, kind of collection of creations done here or for the green screen challenge so i appreciate you putting that in there but don't be upset uh some of you may have seen i've deleted some of your projects from here so that's why i've deleted those i'm trying to keep it so these are things that i want to show people like this is what you created today right um, and i'm going to send out a tweet probably tomorrow that includes nasa and say hey look at these projects um, that these students have made honoring uh, Ms. Johnson and the Mars, the Mars rover landing perseverance. Ooh, I like that. She was a NASA man. Oh, I like the way you transitioned. And the Earth is still there. Let's see. I wonder if they stay. I'm curious now. She would say, "Go NASA!" Whoa, there's the rover. Oh, you've got them all running. Nice. I like that you changed the background too. I like the way the sky crane is like flying past the rover image too. Awesome. Oh, and I can see some animation in the background still running. Good job. I know there's a lot of pieces in this. I put a lot of content here. Nice job, Gimo. I like it. I like it. Let's see. Did I miss anybody? Oh, there's blue whales. Blue whale, you want me to play what you've got so far? Sure. Right now I'm working on the rover's poop. <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert spoiler alert <laughs> i think that's allowed on a live broadcast i think it's a an allowed word to say <laughs> all right here we go oh somebody already gave you somebody already gave you a heart and star see i think this is really nice that all of you are looking at each other's projects and if you have any comments of what you liked or what ideas you have of things they could add it's always nice to hear i really i, I really think that's cool that somebody's already giving you a like on that let's see what we got all right this is going to be the last one and we're going to wrap up i know we're like yikes we went over honoring katherine johnson yeah math by hand she would do a lot of math by hand it's amazing I'm curious if you had it whoa there it is the earth disappears just in time whoa you've got fast animation on yours oh and there oh and there's the rover i like it so your animation didn't have any delay i could tell because it came like swooping at me and i like the way you shrunk the rover it looks pretty cool i like uh two of you have already kind of used the smaller rover images and the one had it uh i'm a little afraid you mentioned the poop from the rover it's kind of funny but underneath the rover I don't know. We haven't talked about it. There is a drone. They're going to try the first attempted flight on another planet on the surface. So it's going to drop. There's an animation there in Giphy as well. And it's going to drop underneath. It's carrying this little tiny drone. 
it's really hard to fly on the surface of Mars because the atmosphere is, I think, like 1% of the Earth, or is it 10%? I might be off. So the air is barely there. So using blades to lift is really hard. So these things spin super fast. They're going to do it, I think, next week. And the rover, there's an animation. It backs off, and this camera right here in the front is going to watch the, the, the drone try to fly on Mars. So keep an eye out in the news for that. Um, so when you sh said something about poop, I was thinking like, oh, yeah, they are going to have uh, uh, something where the drone does drop something. Uh, let's see. Last check on any comments. Uh, why does it have to be on Saturdays? Well, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm going to have some classes during the week coming up for some spring break for classes. I'm just doing this to get people so they can watch scenes. And I used to get up and, and do some uh, watching cartoons. So I thought this would be something better for kids to do than watching cartoons. Um, good question. All right. Thanks for all the comments uh, for parents. And uh, thank you very much to Blue Whale and V. Thank you for joining and, and uh, helping create together and giving me ideas on the code. I uh, love hearing your ideas because they're different than what I thought. And that's what I like about coding is how you think about things. Parents, you want to reach me. Uh, for students to be a guest uh, uh, assistant coach like Blue Whale and V, I need, uh, again, these are recorded. They're on the internet. Uh, they're open to the public. So I do need special permission because I want to make sure uh, children's privacy is protected uh, to the fullest extent uh, possible while we share uh, having fun together. Any last comments, Blue Whale or V? You want to wave bye to everybody? Thanks for joining the live stream. I hope you had fun. We'll be back next Saturday, same time, and all the Saturdays in March as well. So I am going to have some classes during the week. I just haven't figured out the schedule, so your parents can keep an eye out for that. Anyway, all right. Code on. I forgot that last week. I was like, how could I forget to say code on at the end of the show? And then this is a special for SP20 Fox. Uh, she's been in some of my classes, and she says, I say you have to have broken wrists to try to do this. She does this really well. I have a hard time. Uh, Gimo does it really well, too. So anyway, Blue Whale had no problems. I think, I think you have to have youth cartilage in your hands. Anyway, yeah, see, V, oh, V's got it easy, too. So you guys have, like, I don't know, I always thought it was broken wrists. All right, Code On, thanks for joining. We'll see you next Saturday. If not, all the recordings from the weeks before are available, too, on, on the YouTube channel. Take care. Bye-bye.